Good morning and welcome back to the Petel course on classics in total synthesis. Uh, so we have been discussing total synthesis of several natural products and in the last class we talked in details about uh, Casey Nicolau's total synthesis of taxol using diel sol reaction as the key reaction. So today, so we will move ahead and then we will talk about uh, one more total synthesis which was reported by Danishevsky's group. As you know, in the 20th century, there were six total synthesis and the first one was reported by Robert Halton and at, at almost at the same time, uh, Niccolo also reported the total synthesis of uh, Taxol and two years later, uh, Danishevsky reported the total synthesis and a year later, Paul Wender reported the total synthesis from a chiral terpene called Verbino. Okay. And in 1998, Kawajima reported the total synthesis of uh, taxol and Mukayama reported the total synthesis of taxol from an amino acid. So today, uh, when we talk about total synthesis of taxol by Dan Shkipsky, so what he did was he made first the bacatin. So the bacatin means, so this is the bacatin structure. Okay. First he made the total sense of bacatin, then followed by attaching the side chain, thus he completed the total sense of taxol. It was reported in 1996 and he started with a very well known starting material called VLAN measure ketone. So VLAN measure ketone is commercially available as well as one can prepare in optically active form from 2-methyl cyclohexane 1,3-dione using L-proline as the chiral promoter in the Robinson annihilation sequence. Okay. So, his uh, scheme was started with as I said uh, VLAN measure ketone and if you look at the VLAN measure ketone and then taxol, you can see here this 6 membered ring has the carbonyl function which later will be converted into the hydroxyl group here and then you have the angular methyl group already fixed. So, this forms the C ring of taxol. Okay, so, he thought of making the C ring of taxol. This is A ring, this is B ring, this is C ring and then you have D ring also. Okay. So, the C ring of taxol came from this cyclohexanol and later he cleaved the other 6 membered ring which later became the 8 membered ring of taxol. Okay. So, let us see how he worked on the total synthesis. So, first let us start with the construction or synthesis of C ring because I said he started with VLAN measure ketone with the intention of making the C ring from the cyclohexanone ring. Okay. So, this was made from the cyclohexane 13 dione 2 methyl cyclohexane 13 dione using asymmetric Robinson annihilation to get the VLAN measure ketone okay, in optically active form. Then you have two carbonyl groups one is alpha beta unsaturated ketone, other one is a normal carbonyl group. Okay. One can selectively reduce the carbonyl group of C ring using sodium borohydride and ethanol. You can take 0.25 equivalents of sodium borohydride and do it at sub-zero, you can get this alcohol. Once you have this alcohol, you can protect the alcohol as acetate by treating with acetic anhydride and DMAP. Now, when you protect the carbonyl group, of the alpha beta and such a ketone under acidic condition, what happens? Invariably, the double bond migrates to the other ring. Okay? So, this is well known in the literature when you protect the ketone of alpha beta unsaturated ketone, the double bond migrates to the other ring. Okay? Now, as you know, uh, for the C ring, you need to functionalize these two carbon atoms because that is where you, you have the oxytane ring. So, the pushing of the double bond to the other ring actually helps. So, how it helps? Now, the double bond if you do hydroboration and oxidation, you will get the hydroxyl group at this carbon. Okay. So, before that you, you have to remove the acetate. Okay. So, that could be easily done by treatment with sodium ethoxy and methanol. Then protect the alcohol, okay. re-protect the alcohol as TBS ether. Okay protect this as TBS ether. Then as I said, you do the hydroboration oxidation and you introduce the hydroxyl group. Now using this hydroxyl group, using this hydroxyl group, you have to introduce the oxidant. Okay. The first step is obviously the oxidation of the secondary alcohol to the ketone. Okay. 
So now you have the ketone. From this ketone, he got the oxytane by two different routes. Okay, the first route where he has used trimethyl sulfonium elide. Okay, when you have this trimethyl sulfonium iodide treatment with potassium hexamethyl disulfide, it forms trimethyl sulfonium elide. Okay, that elide attacks this carbonyl group and it forms the epoxy. Okay, now if you treat with a Lewis acid, aluminum triisopropoxide, that opens the epoxide and it generates a positive charge followed by loss of proton, you get the allylic alcohol. So now what you have done, you have introduced another functional group. So using this double bond, one can get the oxytane which is required in the CDV. Another method to get this allylic alcohol, he started with the same ketone, but what he did was he treated with a base, potassium hexamethyl disulfide generates anion and he quenched that enolate with pH and TF, TF2 to form the enol triflate. Once you have enol triflate, then palladium catalyzed carbonyl insertion, okay, palladium catalyzed carbonyl insertion followed by attack of the intermediate with methanol, one can convert the enol triflate to alpha beta unsaturated ester. Okay. Once you have alpha beta unsaturated ester, simple reduction with dibol gives the same allylic alcohol. Okay. So the allylic alcohol was prepared by two different routes. Uh, this method actually involved four steps whereas the earlier method involved only two steps. So with this allylic alcohol in hand, the next task for Danishevsky's group is to make the oxytane ring, that the four membered oxytane ring. So for that, you need to do a dihydroxylation. Okay, so simple osmium tetroxide dihydroxylation gave a mixture of the required triol with some amount of the unwanted triol. Okay, now if you see, so the hydroxyl group here, which is which should be alpha in the taxol, if you see that is OAC. Then this CH2OH also should be beta, and using this you can cyclize here. Okay. So, what you need to do is the primary alcohol you have to protect it, then the secondary alcohol you have to make it as a good leaving group, then you make the oxytane ring followed by protection of the tertiary alcohol. So, the primary alcohol was uh, in situ, in situ protected as a TMS ether, as you know TMS is a, a level protecting group and that was protected. Then the secondary alcohol, so the secondary alcohol was protected as triplate. Okay, the secondary alcohol was protected as a triplate. So now you can see the secondary alcohol is made as a good leaving group. Now if you remove the TMS, if you remove the TMS, automatically the O minus can attack intramolecularly and form the oxytane ring. So this was accidentally observed by treating with uh, ethylene glycol. So when they reflex with ethylene glycol, so it removed the TMS and then also formed the oxytate. They also got a very interesting product. If you look at this product, you, you can easily you know, explain how this would have formed. When you see a 1,2 diol, when you see a 1,2 diol, one rearrangement which should come to your mind is pinacol pinacol and rearrangement, isn't it? So here, the secondary alcohol is made as a good leaving group and you have a tertiary alcohol. So automatically, the reaction which should come to your mind is pinacol pinacol rearrangement. So this product is obtained by pinacol pinacol and rearrangement. Okay, the, the expected product, the required product was converted into the corresponding benzylate that is the tertiary alcohol. The tertiary alcohol was protected as benzyl ether, though if you look at the natural product, the tertiary alcohol should be protected as acetate, but acetate is a label protecting group and this has to undergo so many functional group transformation. This particular intermediate has to undergo so many functional group transformation. So it is better to keep a more stable protecting group than what is really required at the end. So with that idea, Danishevsky group protected the tertiary alcohol as benzyl ether. Okay. Then you have to remove the ketal 
as you know the this six member ring now it should be converted into eight member ring isn't it so for that you have to remove the ketal to ketone that is easily achieved by treating with uh, toluene sulfonic acid and acetone in the presence of water so now you have the ketone and you have to cleave this carbon this carbon carbon bond needs to be cleaved so how this can be done you have to make a enol ether isn't it so the enol ether formation is quite simple and straight forward if you take this ketone and then treat with tms triflate then you get the corresponding enol tms ether okay this enol tms ether if you treat with epoxidizing agents like dimethyl dioxirane dmdo okay then what you get is the corresponding epoxide now the epoxide can be opened with the camphor sulfonic acid to get alpha hydroxy ketone okay so this alpha hydroxy ketone when when you have alpha hydroxy ketone if you treat with lead tetracetate then this cc bond can be easily cleaved when it cleaves the top portion that is the hydroxy carbon will become aldehyde the carbonyl one if you use methanol then it will become corresponding methyl ester so now you can see cl clearly here so you have the cd ring in place and the b ring now earlier it was six membered ring now that has been opened okay so it has to be converted into eight membered ring and at the same time you also have to attach the a ring okay a ring and b ring together it should be attached so how he did so if you look at this you have a carbonyl group in the form of aldehyde and another carbonyl group in the form of ester one can easily differentiate these two okay. as you know carbonyl group of aldehyde is more reactive so that aldehyde is protected as acetal with methanol and uh, uh, mild acid so you have protected the aldehyde now now what you need is you you have to remove one carbon you have to remove one carbon and get aldehyde there okay i will tell you why we need that when i come to the attachment of a ring to this okay so this is done first you reduce the ester to alcohol with the lh then what you need as i said you need to remove one carbon basically you have to cleave this okay you have to cleave this to get this aldehyde so this is the intermediate you need because this upon treatment with a ring so you have a ring which is a six membered ring the six membered ring can be easily attached to this aldehyde okay this has one extra carbon this has one extra carbon that extra carbon should be removed how one can remove if you carefully look at this if you can convert this alcohol into a double bond okay if you can convert this alcohol into a double bond then simple wasson analysis you can get this aldehyde isn't it you can remove one carbon so how do you introduce a double bond okay so there's a very interesting method where you can treat this with this corresponding selenocyanide ortho nitrophenyl selenocyanide in the presence of tributyl phosphine so what happens the oh is replaced with this corresponding selenium okay when we introduce selenium you know in the literature it is well known for example if you have a ketone if you want to introduce a double bond next to the ketone normally what do you do you treat with a base and then treat with phenyl selenyl chloride so that you can introduce a cph at the alpha carbon now mild treatment with uh, you know peracids like mcbva hydrogen peroxide it will oxidize the selenium to selenoxide and then automatically selenoxyl elimination will take place to introduce the double bond so once you have done this now you introduce the selenium group just to treat with hydrogen peroxide so as i said it will oxidize the selenium to corresponding selenoxide followed by elimination of corresponding ortho nitroselenic acid you get the double bond so once you have the double bond it's very simple and straight forward you do the was analysis okay was analysis will give the aldehyde so now you have the real c d ring with two substituents at c ring which can be attached to a ring to form the b ring <coughs> okay 
So with this, now we will see how they made the earring. Okay, they started with very very simple compounds. So one is methyl acrylate, other one is three pentanol. These two are commercially available. Okay, methyl acrylate and three pentanol. Now if you treat with sodium ethoxide and methanol, okay, very interesting. See, you can see first the enolate that is carbanion is formed here and it undergoes 1,4 addition and another enolate forming on the other carbon, the carbanion can attack this and it gives a very good yield, a decent yield of this cyclohexane, okay, cyclohexane 1,3-diode, okay, 1,3-diode, okay. And then 2 position you have methyl group and 2 and 4 position you have methyl group, 2, 4 dimethyl. Now what you need is you need, if you look at taxol, at this carbon you need one more methyl group. So that is very simple, you treat with sodium hydride and then methyl hydride, you get this compound. Okay. So now it has all the functional groups present in earring. You treat with hydrazine, okay, why hydrazine? Because later he wanted to introduce a vinyl iodide, he wanted to introduce a vinyl iodide. So it is well known if you have a hydrazone and then treat with bases like DBU or DBN and iodine, it will form the corresponding vinyl iodide. So that is what he did, okay. But what happened when he treated with excess iodine and DBN, excess iodine and DBN, okay. So one more iodine was introduced at this carbon, okay. And followed by elimination, so you got another double bond. Okay, two double bonds were formed. It's okay, good. So now what we need is, as I said, this iodine should be exchanged with lithium and added to the aldehyde. Okay. So before that, this carbonyl group should be protected, isn't it? If you have to treat with tertiary butyl lithium to exchange, the carbonyl group should be protected. Okay. So how to protect the carbonyl group? You can in situ protect with TMS cyanide and catalytic amount of potassium cyanide. So basically it is a cyanohydrin form formation, okay. The cyanohydrin formation and the cyanohydrin hydroxyl group is protected as TMS ether, okay. Then if you treat with tertiary butyl lithium, the iodine will be exchanged with lithium. So this is the A ring. Once you have this A ring, already we have made the C ring with the aldehyde, okay. Straight away you can add this vinyl lithium which is prepared in situ and added to this aldehyde. Okay. Now you can see you have coupled the A ring and C D ring, A ring and C D ring. Okay. Now what you should do? You should get back, you should get back the ketone here. So if you take one equivalent of TBAP. Okay, you have TBS as well as OTMS, but OTMS is very labile, so you can easily cleave the OTMS. So that means it becomes O minus. As you know, cyanohydrins are unstable. That is because cyanohydrins, if we have base, then it will form O minus. When O minus is there, O minus will come back and then eliminate cyanide. So here, that is the same principle. Once you treat with TBAF. Immediately TMS group goes and then you form O minus, that O minus, O minus here comes and then cyanide comes out and you get the ketone, okay. So what is to be done? If you look at taxol, at this position you have a hydroxyl group, isn't it? At this position you have a hydroxyl group. So now you have a double bond. So that double bond should be converted into a hydroxyl group. So if you treat with MCPBA, if you treat this compound with MCPBA, there are two double bonds, okay. One is electron rich, other one is electron deficient because this double bond you can say it is allylic alcohol, okay. So now if you treat with MCPBA, only this double bond will be epoxidized, only this double bond will be epoxidized. Okay. Then you have to open the epoxide, you have to open the epoxide. As you know, if we have allylic ether, benzylic ether, 
allylic epoxide then under hydrogenolysis condition one can cleave this type of CO bond okay, it's like hydrogenolysis of allylic ethers benzyl ethers and this also an allylic ether isn't it so if you treat with hydrogenation condition at low temperature very important because otherwise you have benzyl group here o benzyl that also will be removed okay under minus 5 degrees one can selectively open the epoxide to get the hydroxyl group okay now once you have these two hydroxyl group just reduce the enone reduce the enone with l selectride okay then you protect this diol protect this diol one to diol with posgene okay with posgene to get the corresponding cyclic carbonyl the southern hemisphere now it is fully functionalized southern hemisphere of taxol is fully functionalized okay now what we need to do is you have to connect the northern hemisphere okay so original plan was to carry out an intramolecular heck reaction okay so for that what you need you need this to be enol triflate okay so that is very easy you treat with base and quench with the corresponding triflating agent so you get the enol triflate and for heck reaction other side you need double bond so you have to remove this acetal and convert into double bond that is also simple so remove the acetal and then do a wittig reaction you get the double bond so now you see the key intermediate is there and a successful intramolecular heck cyclization between this vinyl triplate and the double bond should give eight membered ring with exocyclic double bond okay so that's what happened so you take the vinyl triflate and then treat with uh, you know tetrakis palladium phosphorus uh, so as you know this is a very interesting reaction and you got a decent yield of this eight membered ring okay this like intramolecular heck cyclization gave this eight membered ring okay so now you remove the tbs with the tbuf and reprotect it as ts because tbs was creating trouble so they changed to ts ether so now what you need to do is you need to remove the double bond okay so the removing the double bond at the same time you have to introduce a hydroxyl group here carbonyl group here okay so before removing the double bond first he has to protect this internal double bond okay so that was done with the mcbba okay then you do the was analysis and before doing was analysis you can remove the benzyl group now now the benzyl group okay it has served its purpose okay you can remove the benzyl group and get the alcohol then acetylate because in taxol you need the acetate isn't it yeah so do the acetate protecting group now you treat with phenyl lithium as you know in the b ring this is o benzoate okay to get o benzoate if you treat with phenyl lithium it opens regio selectively and you get o benzoate here and at the bridge head you have hydroxyl group so this is well established uh, by others so straight away he get this combo now if you look at this you, it has almost all the functional groups except in b ring you need a ketone and acetate and also this epoxide which was originally protected is not required okay so now what you do you treat with osmium tetroxide followed by cleavage with red tetracyclate this is a standard method to get the ketone okay double bond to ketone now if you treat with samarium iodide samarium iodide a radical anion followed by opening of this epoxide to get aldol like product that upon treatment with acetic anhydride undergoes elimination and you reintroduce the double bond in a ring at the same time what you got is the keto functional group but in taxol you have ketone here and you have o acetate here isn't it so how will you do that how you introduce ketone here and acetate so how it is done you generate enolate okay you generate enolate and then treat with you know you introduce an oxygen using this particular reagent so basically what you have done is you 
enolate and then introduce a hydroxyl group and once again when you treat with potassium tertiary butoxide the it rearranges it becomes this side it becomes ketone this side it becomes hydroxyl group okay now that compound or if you acetylate and this is what you need this is what you need for taxol now if you see you have everything what is required in the ring except the side chain here okay so that is simple so you oxidize with pcc and you get the alpha beta unsaturated ketone that alpha beta unsaturated ketone if you reduce with sodium borohydride you get the allylic alcohol okay so now the allylic alcohol if you treat with hf pyridine if you treat with hf pyridine then you get a natural compound called bacatin 3 okay so he is synthesized bacatin 3 but instead if he takes this compound if he takes this compound then treat with ojimas lactam okay this we already discussed when we talked about total synthesis of taxol by kc nikolo we discussed this okay so you take this alcohol and treat with ojimas lactam then you can get or you can easily introduce the side chain so now what you need is you have to remove this ts group if you remove the ts group that will be the taxol molecule okay hf pyridine he could successfully remove the ts group that gave taxol <coughs> so he could successfully synthesize taxol from commercially available vilan mischer ketone and also the 2,4 trimethyl cyclohexane 1,3 dione which also can be easily prepared from methyl acrylate and 3 pentanol okay so that is how he synthesis was very simple and straight forward and it is though the number of steps is more uh, but it involved you know very simple and straight forward synthesis okay thank you